Welcome to the second video bulletin of the 2014 season. I'm Tom Heiler, the Director of Umpires for the NCAA. Over the past couple of weeks, several ejection reports have been received where assistant coaches have been running onto the field and engaging in arguments with the umpires and have been subsequently ejected and suspended. The NCAA reminds all institutions that this is a violation of the NCAA playing rules. Assistant coaches are not allowed to argue and not allowed to come on the field and argue with umpires. Umpires are directed to issue an immediate warning, and if the coach does not return to his position and cease arguing, he shall be ejected immediately. Ultimately, head coaches are responsible for the behavior of both their players and the assistant coaches. A reminder that the head coach is required to attend the home plate meeting for any single game and for the first game of any scheduled series. This requirement is so that the umpires become familiar with who the head coach is and that the head coach hears the ground rules. The pregame at the plate conference is not to begin until the head coach is in attendance. The following is a play from this past week. On any fly ball that has a chance of being a fair foul decision, the umpire is required to be straddling the foul line and most of all to stop and get set. This has been a point of emphasis the past two years with the NCAA umpire program. Umpires at all levels are required to stop and get set for the critical action of any play. In this particular play, the umpire needs to stop, pull his eyes ahead of the ball, and get set and focus on the fielder's mitt. Our last play this week has an unfortunate ending as two players started to approach each other and ended up with multiple ejections and four game suspensions. I applaud the umpire crew for doing a good job of sorting out the situation and issuing the proper suspensions. The part of this play that I want to focus on the most is the blatant runner's interference that was not called by this crew on the batter runner. Folks, this is a major violation of the NCAA playing rules. An NCAA collegiate umpire crew is expected to be able to clearly officiate this kind of play. We have a fielder in the act of fielding a batted ball. The batter runner must avoid this fielder who is in the act of fielding. Yes, the fielder bobbled the ball, but the ball is still within a step and a reach of the fielder, and therefore the fielder is still protected by rule. This play took place beyond the 45-foot mark towards first base. The primary responsibility of this interference being called is on the first base umpire. At any level of NCAA baseball, this call must be made. At the very least, when this crew gets together after the play, the crew chief needs to address this, and it should have been called. I want to make it perfectly clear that the primary responsibility of this play is the first base umpire. Runner's lane interference is the sole responsibility of the home plate umpire, but this is not a runner's lane infraction due to the fact that there is no throw to first base to retire the batter runner. The runner is not required on this play to run within the runner's lane. Again, the primary responsibility of this play is the first base umpire, and the secondary responsibility would be the home plate umpire. 